Hey guys, what's up? It's been a while, but um, I'm here taking care of my mom. She's not been doing very well. Um, I can't remember the last update I did on her, but she decided to do the chemotherapy and I think she did it for six months of aggressive chemotherapy and she almost died. Um, I think either seven or eight weeks ago, um, she was going in for her, her next chemotherapy appointment and, uh, she just collapsed in the office and went to the ER and there was fluid on her heart, fluid on her lungs, um, could hardly breathe, uh, the pressure was just too much, couldn't move, wasn't really coherent, um, doctor just kind of was like well you know this is stage four cancer not, you know this is how it is and it just kind of dawned on me like you go to the ER to like be taken care of and you assume that they can do stuff for you and that they'll always be able to help you when in reality it's like you go to these chemotherapy doctors and they're like oh yeah, you know, there's hope for you, like, we'll do this, and, you know, they just give you false hope, and then when they're done with you, and you're in the ER, um, they just kind of throw you to the wolves, you know, and then, oh, here's my little doggy. they just kind of throw you, throw you out there, and then there's nothing you can do, and you just kind of die alone, you know, on the, the ER table, like, you know what I mean? Like, what? what's the plan after chemotherapy? What if it doesn't work? You know, they don't have no idea of who's maybe too frail to be doing it or who's, you know, has so much lymphatic congestion that they're, the chemotherapy is just going to kill them, you know? So it's like they don't have an idea of who's going to be, you know, a statistic and who isn't, and it it has to do with genetics and lymphatic stagnation and how your kidneys are filtering, how your kidneys are genetically. Um, so it just made me realize like, you don't want to dig yourself into a hole that doctors don't even know how to get you out of and then ultimately suffer there and die there alone with no other plan of escape, I guess. So, basically, the chemotherapy burned her lungs together, so they're like, um, they're honeycombed or something like that, so she needs oxygen now, where she didn't before. She was at a point where she wasn't drinking any water, uh, she wasn't going to the bathroom, she maybe peed once per day, uh, didn't go number two for weeks, um... And that'll kill you real fast, you know? You're getting chemotherapy and you're not even eliminating. Mm, I'm surprised she lasts that long, honestly. Uh, but in the hospital, they drained the fluid off of her heart. And um, after that, she was doing a lot better. Because, I mean, she just couldn't breathe. She couldn't handle, handle the pressure in her chest. Um, it was going to kill her, so... I started juicing celery for her and bringing it to her in the hospital. I told her not to eat any of the hospital food. I started bringing her cucumber salad with like avocado. Um, I started her on raw food 100%. And eventually she got out of the hospital. I think she was there for like four days, maybe. I think four days. And then um, she came home and I had her on just kidney herbs. Kidney, kidney, kidney. We got the swelling down on her feet. Um, they were like sausages and um, so the kidney herbs were really helped and I believe are keeping the fluid off of her heart and lungs. Like I said, it's been eight weeks out. The doctor said she didn't know if her lungs or heart were going to fill up in two days, in a week or whatever. They said to keep an eye on her, but I just kept really focusing on her kidneys and I, apparently she has good kidneys that uh, are helping helping carry her through this 
but so she was doing better and then she got really sensitive to all the pain medication she's on so so now we're trying to taper her off of the pain medication um the morphine was making her kind of tweak out they had her on a pretty high dose so then we kind of lowered it lowered it lowered it lowered it but um she was just kind of tweaking out like on edge like anxiety attacks all day it was like an all day anxiety attack um there were points where I had to come over her at night just to help her relax and fall asleep. That was really hard on me. And so right now we are going through morphine withdrawal. She is on another opiate, so I assume it's not as bad as it would be as if she wasn't on any opiates at all. But, um, so now I'm learning about like this opiate epidemic and like uh, how it, they work and how people can get addicted to them and experience a withdrawal. Um, and it's like really making me upset and like really motivating me to take care of myself because I never ever ever want to be in a position where I'm having to deal with that or depend on pharmaceuticals or anything like that or even get myself to a place where just I'm just degenerating and when I can stop it so it's like really alarming and frightening and really eye-opening and um just yeah eye-opening and how we need to change our lifestyles and in order to not suffer but then it's like the world is we have duality here so there has to be the good and the bad for people to learn and like I said I don't I don't know where these souls have been um, and what they've done to come to this journey here but man if you are receptive to this and understand do not get yourself into this hole so back to what I was saying we're tapering off the opiates um, she's just wiped out tired she's almost she's confused she can hardly walk i have to help her to get up and go to the bathroom um her feet are swollen again she's not drinking enough water so it's really just like kind of a nightmare and i i had to quit my job to help her i come over here every day in the daytime because everyone else is at work and <laughs> hey and I'm like the only one that can help her who understands like what's going on so I feel obligated to do this so it's like my life has been put on hold and I've been really stressed out and not able to like cleanse my own body and it's kind of just really frustrating because stress will really affect you and and your life and and sometimes it's more powerful than food and food reactions that you have and um so it's just been really hard but I'm trying to get through it and I'm hoping this is gonna teach me something that I'm gonna need to know for myself in the future and hopefully I can get her out of this but it's like a really sticky situation um just really critical but the doctor said you know she only had like two weeks to live and wouldn't make it to my wedding which my wedding is in a week and she seems to be doing fine beside the the withdrawal um so I've kind of prolonged her life but I'm really trying to step it up and get her functioning again and hopefully I can and if I can then I'm just gonna be elated so that's kind of where I'm at right now my health journey kind of halted as it usually does which is really frustrating but I'm trying I'm really trying to make a an effort to do things I know that'll be good for me and to try to relax and and take care of myself but it's really hard really really hard so yeah that's just a little update on what I'm going through right now. Um, my kidneys are still filtering, so that's pretty amazing and confirms my beliefs in really hitting the kidneys hard if you want uh, prolonged results because I am eating uh, worse than I was. And I'm eating foods that last year I couldn't eat at all. They would 
uh, like trigger some kind of weird inflammatory response. Um, and I'm doing not great, but I'm not bedridden. So um, once you get those kidneys up and running, they are just gonna kind of work for you in the background. And if you slip up, like it's not gonna be the end of the world. And whereas if your kidneys aren't filtering, you might feel really good on the raw diet or whatever, but then if you slip up or something, you might take a really hard fall. Kind of like I was doing last year. Like I'd slip up and then I'd be out for like two weeks, um, but then I'd feel better if I went on raw food. But now that my kidneys are filtering a little more, um, I feel like it's more of a consistent, like I'm, I'm more resilient. So definitely stress, stressing the kidneys. And in fact, I'm gonna go get my mom some more kidney herbs because her feet are really swollen and this woman is just, just, I don't know. I don't even know. Okay. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.